pet Stanberry. The game has done the important work. We can pet the dog. It barks at you. Oh, and moves behind its master. <laughs> well, shucks. Welcome back to the cafe. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy a second episode of The Pale Beyond. We're going to continue in our journey. And um, what I'm curious to know from all of you watching is what you think makes a good leader. I think that's going to be important for this episode and moving forward in The Pale Beyond. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, be sure to follow if you are enjoying the series. All right, let's hop in. Time to get ready for the next week on the ship. Here we go. Week two, we have spent two weeks on the temperance. Saved game to tree. There's a rap on your cabin door. Max crew is now 29. Oh, uh, come in. Hello. <laughs> the door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling, all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. There you are, Officer Shaw. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. Adorned with a slew of apparatus, this seemingly one-man expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration. And the merchandising that followed. Oh, Kurt. The photographer mentioned Kurt, and that, that there was a bit of celebrity surrounding the name. Um, I could say I have no time for celebrities. It's an honor, or I know little of the man. Um... I know little about him. His reputation is indeed great, but the man behind the legend is but a stranger. Hiding away from the rest of us, are you? Uh, do you need something of me, Kurt? I'm not the sort to demand favors, Officer Shaw. Apologies for not stopping by sooner. It took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. Okay, okay, Kurt. Um... That's right. You're something of a celebrity, aren't you? I take that to mean you haven't heard of me before. Well, that is a pleasant surprise. There aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. Oh God. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired them to explore the world. Quite the honor, is it not? I mean, that sounds great. I'd be really curious to know how much of that is like production and how much of that is real expertise um oh no, all of these are a little bit a little bit standoffish in a different way i'm certain you receive that praise often this crew doesn't seem the film going type is there a point to any of this grandstanding um i feel like i'm just gonna go with this statement of fact probably hear that a lot sir not as often as you would think. Ahem. <clears throat> I suppose I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping you'd join me up deck. Uh, of course. But why? We finally entered the pack. I thought you'd want to see it for yourself. Oh, I'll be right behind you. That's cool. The ice pack is what he's referring to. I'll be right behind you. Kurt turns to walk away before turning back. Oh, and enjoy your morning. It's a good day, Shah. Ha. All right, so we've added Kurt Darling to our manifest. He leaves. Do I have anything? Okay, so this is just our week two sort of summary that we got already. Um, all right, let's head on out and see what has happened in this week. Let's go to the mid deck. I want to see. Oh, everyone's still sleeping. Many of the crew are fast asleep snoring, laying in hammocks. Best not disturb them, Shaw. You don't want to find yourself dealing with an abruptly woken sailor. Let, let us head up deck. The sounds of snoring are rather obnoxious. Oh, okay, and I don't see anything. Whoop. Sensitivity on my mouse is a little bit high. Um, let's go up. Oh, wait, hold on. We have the door to the doctor's office remains locked. There's another person right here, but we can't speak to them quite yet. Seems the good doctor isn't in, perhaps enjoying his sleep. You are yet to come across the ship's doctor, even after all this time. Okay, this was my room. Okay, so, oh, here, let's meet Mrs. Gloss. Oh, the other science team member. Um, uh, Mrs. Gloss, did you have a good rest? She nods to you. 
Uh, hello. I did not expect many to be up this early. Harriet Glossley. Oh, I believe I've met your husband. Ah, yes. Dwight made mention of your encounter. He's still fast asleep. He's adjusted to the ship well. Ah, which alludes to the fact that she may not have been adjusting very well. I believed a walk around the ship would help acclimate myself to the waves. Perhaps it'll take more time. Yeah, oh. With that, Mrs. Gloss makes her way back to her cabin. Uh, the science team aren't used to the sea or the sailor folk. Quite the culture clash, isn't it? Well, I'm sure they'll grow used to them over time. Ha. Huh. All right, so we've got available crewmate now. Ooh. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the vastness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, let's let's hop back in. All right, so remember the yellow circles indicate moving forward in the story, so I'm not going to speak to Kurt quite yet. At the stern, you notice an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath in the cold air before letting out a satisfied exhale. Morning. And a good morning to you. He eyes you up. Officer Shaw, right? Lefty. Call me that on account of, well, should be obvious. He chuckles. <laughs> Don't worry about the bad sight. This is all I feel. Just keeping her steady. He examines you. Surprised hunt pick from outside for his first mate. That's interesting. So it seems like maybe other crew members know one another and know hunt a bit more. And I'm the newbie. Um, I'm surprised as well. He seems the insular type. I assure you I'm more than qualified. Would you prefer the role? I don't want to straight up ask that. I feel like that that's a faux pas, both in, in a couple of respects. Um, I'm going to just I'm going to show some confidence here. I don't want them to feel like I can't do the job. Oh, I don't doubt that. You must be something special for Hunt to look outside the ranks. Okay. You've got the experience, at least. Merchant Navy's quieter, though. Mornings like these are about the only peace I get from the younger lot. You should take these moments when you can. Lefty returns his attention to the helm. As you get older, I suppose you learn to value the quiet moments, eh? Let's let us hope we're just as diligent when we're old and gray. Myself before you, of course. <laughs> I mean, I hope when I'm old and gray, I'm not working. I, I don't know about you, but... All right, anything in the cabin? Nope. Okay, so then back out. The, the, the captain's not in the cabin, which is a little odd. You join Kurt at the bow of the ship. You both feel the temperance break the flows below you. Gripping the railing, he draws an enormous breath. The footing beneath rises as the ship mounts an impending ice flow. There's a moment's hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship, cascading across the ice. He exhales. See? Nothing else like it. I mean, you weren't wrong. It's something, all right. Look at the ice. No two cracks are the same. Ah, but now I can say all caused by us? Did you want to just show me the ice? For now, I need a navigator, not a poet. I'm gonna ask, did you just want to show me the ice or is there something else? We're about a week's sail from the last known location of the old Viscount. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her, we can't take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for this daylight. It won't remain this bright for so long once winter encroaches. Beautiful as the ice is, on this course, it's going to get thicker. He looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here till the next cycle. We need to change course. Avoid the pack. Uh, have you informed the captain? It seems like a captain's call. <laughs> he won't listen to me. Thinks I've been doled by retirement. I've probably seen more ice than he has whiskey. 
All right, we're getting into dicey territory here. Um, I could just say Captain knows best, it's not my decision, but I also am a little bit apprehensive because of the rumors that this that we've heard about him drinking and not maybe being the most proficient at what he does. Um, I trust him in terms of as a person. I think he wants what's best for his crew. But Kurt is the navigator for a reason. I don't want to completely cut him off, though. I think that would be an unwise. Not I'll hear no more of this. So I'll just say we have enough supplies if it comes to that. Which I'm not even sure about, to be really honest. It's not the supplies I'd be worried about in that situation. People will turn on each other before they let themselves starve. Have you ever experienced the long night winter? It's not pleasant, to say the least. Okay. If it comes to that, we'll adapt. There's a chain of command. This one isn't one of your... This isn't one of your adventure serials. I can't say I have. I'm gonna be honest, I will say I cannot say I've experienced a long winter. And if he has, I should probably listen. We're only as good as the unhappiest man, Robin. Ooh, okay, so I could flex and be like, that's first mate to you, Kurt. Kurt buddy old pal. Um, but I think he's, I'm hoping that he's speaking informally due to his his ability and his hope to connect. So I'm just gonna say I'll do what I can. It's kind of a classic, classic customer service moment. I'll let the team know. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Kurt nods and turns back to look across the ice. All right, so we're still in week two. Let's see. I'm gonna investigate the ship a little bit, just very quickly. Everyone's still asleep, so let's go back to the captain. Captain, my captain. He's still not here! Oh no, he's here. Ah, Shaw. Ready for another day of work? Um, I'm going to bring up Kurt's advice. I think it's valid. Did you hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. Aye, he had a few words to share. He may have been an expert in his time, but these days Kurt is one with... More money than sense. Anyway, back to work. I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests from the crew. You may have noticed the line pooling up outside. Everyone wants something, it seems. Call them in as you please. Okay, so we've got Hammond, Kasha, and Corvid. Um, we saw Corvid the other day, so I want to give someone else an opportunity to speak. Let's talk with Kasha. Captain? Shaw? A thought occurred to me the other day while working looking through the crew manifest, and, well, it might be too late for this now that we've already encountered the ice. Out with it. I thought it would be good to have individual photos of the crew. For your report? Not only my report, it would be good reference for the manifest, but faces to the names. Much of this crew has served me for many years, some decades. I have little problem putting faces to the names. Your thoughts, Shaw? Uh, seems like a good idea. If nothing else, it would make for a good souvenir. It's a waste of time. Or it's a bit late, but it's now or never. May as well get it over with. I feel like it's a good idea. If nothing else, it's a good way for us to track what's happening. Again, we talked about the first time we met Kasha. Like, what she documents is going to be what people use to remember what happens. So I'm gonna say yes sentimental of this expedition, are you? Some proper photographs will have some historical weight to it. Well, Belford, I see no problem there. I'll arrange for the pictures to be taken before the crew have their dinner. Thank you, Captain. Shaw. In the meantime, I'll attempt to get as many individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on that matter, Officer Shaw. She departs, satisfied. Okay. All right, one happy customer. Let's see who else is next. Hammond, we have not met you yet. A short, sour-faced man in engineer clothing approaches. Okay. Are you acting daft, Hunt? Not with intention. Not bloody surprised you didn't notice. Shaw, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An opinionated one. What is it, Hammond? 
We've hit the ice, and you haven't assigned any extra men down on the boiler. You have your engineering team, and we've only got six arms between us. I need more manpower maintaining this, sailors. Many of the crew have their own tasks they're busy with. Hi, cat. It's a rosy break. <laughs> she wants to get in my lap. I know I've already assigned Smurf on a matter. The captain turns to you. How many do you think is fair? One? Three? More. Open the crew manifest to choose how many sailors you wish to assign. Okay. Some choices require you to assign from your manifest. In this choice, you may choose the amount to assign. Okay, so we've we've got three potential positions, one to four. He said he wanted four. The boiler, that's pretty intense. Um, let's do two Johns. Um, I don't, what's tough is I don't know what else, what else we'll need to kind of keep into an account for. Let's do three. Or, I don't know, uh, fine, we'll do four. We'll do four. The boiler seems pretty important. Oh, whoops. Sign crew. Uh, who did I say? Lefty really likes to sail, so I'm gonna have Timmy, which I'm a little apprehensive, because Timmy's a kid. But that's what we're gonna do. You can take two Johns, Runt, Corbett, and Joe. You're giving me the bloody stowaway. Would you rather none? The engineer holds his tongue. The kid's young, energetic, probably very strong. Fine. But you can tell me how right I was when we're buried under the ice. He leaves. A good spirit, that one, beneath the oil and temper. You won't be seeing much of him, though. Prefers to burrow himself into the boiler room. All right, well, here's Corvid, who I've just assigned to go to the boiler room. Hunt, you asked for a report on how the stowaway was doing. Aye, I want to see if the young boy has been settling in well. Yes, indeed. It means another mouth to feed, but the boy works hard and doesn't ask much. He has his daughter got him as well. I'm sure the boy's father is ecstatic. Worried sick, but happy I. Well, what do you know, Shaw? Perhaps we were right to keep the boy aboard. She leaves. Well, and again, it was an extra hand that we didn't get to the boiler. We wouldn't have had for the boiler, right? Good to have all that settled then. Perhaps we shouldn't rule out old Kurt so easily. If the man thinks there could be an alternate path through the ice, he's free to search for it. Shaw, meet with him when you have time. Here we go, Hunt's thinking. All right, I appreciate this. Changing course or not, we'll want one of his scouts set up in the crow's nest. Take care of that, then you'll be done for the day. All right, so we got to get a scout into the crow's nest. I love it. Ooh, okay, so we've got the rigging and we've got Kurt here. Um, ooh, but we also have a sick young man. Oh, no. Sea sick. Oh, yikes. You spot a youthful looking man leaning over the side of the ship. His head slumped as he looks into the icy pool below. It appears he's been visited by a spot of seasickness. Uh, whenever I am sick, I don't want people patting my back. So I'm just going to ask, are you okay? Which is kind of an obvious question. We know that he's not, but it's an opener. You speak out and the sickly man doesn't answer. He raises his head and turns to spot you, his eyes widening in shock as he does. A bespeckled young man shaking with unease. He stares at you for a brief moment, a look of shame plastered upon his face. S sorry Um, are you all right? <laughs> um, yes. Well, not really. Uh, I'm very sorry. The man turns around and hurriedly runs in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. Arthur Nutley <laughs> added to the manifest. All right, well, let's speak to the navigator first and then we'll go up into the rigging. Send me up there, I'll get you a reading. The scientist eyes the man's cane and turns to you. I believe the navigator means to send you, means you to send one of his scouts. The navigator, Kurt, clears his throat and taps his cane. Of course, 
If you find one of mine, they'll get us a reading, rightly. Okay, so let's see. Scout from the crow's nest. Let's go into the rigging. While examining the rigging of the ship, your eyes notice a figure darting by, climbing on the ropes with ease. A figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. Their outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting crew. Ah, no problems. She looks to you. And you are? Um, Officer Shaw, yourself, I'm the first mate. I am not going to go about being all title power hungry. <laughs> I feel like that's the worst way to go when meeting a new group of people. Um, Officer Shaw, yourself? Flick, I'm one of Kurt's crew. Don't worry about my safety. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Kurt doesn't just hire anyone. Well, he didn't hire me for no reason. Got the medals in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. All right, so we've got Flick, whose given name is Soren. Uh, let's go up to the crow's nest. Now we have two undiscovered scouts, so let me go back really quickly and see if I can find anyone else. Oh, oh, we can eavesdrop. You overhear two of the newly arrived scouting crew talking. Ah, Quizzly, have any trouble settling in? Not too bad. I can't wait for a chance to sleep, though. A proper navigator never rests until their work is done. Of course, of course. I take it you had no issue settling in. Not at all. The crew are a funny lot. Oh, well, Kurt certainly caught their attention. Ha! <laughs> Do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? I think you'd collapse from joy if they did. Ah, perhaps. So now we know Yorick and Hadrian. Okay. Let's keep going down. I hear music. This is lovely. We've got a suspicious looking sailor emerging from the pantry. The hooded sailor spots you keeping their hands firmly in their pockets. Not what it looks like, Officer Shaw. Flick. But call me gnomes. I'm not thieving anything. I mean... I'll take them at their word. I'll... If we see this again, maybe we'll have a conversation. Hmm. Expected you to interrogate me more. No worries, I was just setting up a practical joke. Uh, and what is this practical joke? Can I get in on it? <laughs> not going to spoil the surprise. It's not at your expense, if that's your concern. Have to get some enjoyment around here, don't you think? With their mysterious trap set, Gnome scurries off to the upper decks to return to work. Hmm. All right, well, let's meet the cook. Junior! Ah, oh, one of the brothers. Ah, you must be Shaw. Seems you've met my brother already, Yorin Stoke, but nobody calls me that. On this ship, I'm known as Junior. Ah, uh, you seem more personable than your brother. I'm just going to be up front. Aye, you definitely met Grimly. He's not the bad sort, my brother. Just to the point. He decides if he likes you right quick. Hey, Shaw, can you grab some tins from the pantry? It's nearly time for dinner. Aw, shucks. Am I going to be... I'm going to be pranked. The moment you enter the pantry, a bag of flour drops on your head, scattering all your officer's uniform. <laughs> the hells was that? Gnomes? You wipe the flour off you before continuing. That's all right. That's okay. You lift a crate of tins from the shelves. Oh, gnomes. Well, I'm glad I got it instead of someone else. You got anything for the hoosh? Well, here's the hoosh pot. All right, there we go. Oh, that bubbling. That sounds so nice. Fed the hoosh pot. All right. Well, good. We're at 70. I don't want to use too much, um, too much of the food. Now, I want to really quickly, I'm going to scout really fast because I want to get someone there before we all eat dinner. Because I feel like dinner is going to move the time forward. Um, let's do, they're all ice savvy, they're all islanders. I really like Flick, so we're going to put Flick up there. They ascend to the nest and take a reading with the sextant. All clear from up top. 
Oh, hello. What's over here? Orca Island. The last port you made where you picked up Kurt and the scouting team. Oh my goodness, we've already come this far. And if we really zoom out, you can see this is what we're aiming for. The last known location of the Viscount. Your destination. So they said we've got probably about a week until we get through this pack and into the, into the area we're looking for. That's, that's a decent amount. It's a long ways to go. All right, but let's eat dinner. The crew have their meal. All the scraping of the food and the bowls, that makes me hungry. Ah, shall we toast to the ice? Aye. The days get longer, but dinner, dinner is fixed. It will see us through the long days and the darkest nights. Hopefully it'll see us through the pale beyond. <laughs> the crew return to their posts. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening, and you can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. Well, let's do a little eavesdropping first. You notice two sailors passing by from the dinner table. An inebriated sailor on wobbling legs, leaning on the shoulder of another. Ah, good times, good times. Need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Ah, but I'm fine. My mates can carry me, eh, Cavity? They can also drop you. Have two Johns carry you next time. Ugh. Are you asleep? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so we've got two buddies here. All right. Again, we're getting to know folks still. This is a pretty hefty, pretty big crew. Ooh, let's eavesdrop again. You overhear two engineers chatting above deck. Or rather, you overhear one engineer speaking with another. Don't know how the chief could stay down there all evening. You ever see Mr. Hammond eat? <laughs> I haven't. Maybe he doesn't even eat. Man's not human if he can work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. Probably sleeps. <laughs> Aye, Dick. It's figurative. Right. <laughs> Alright, so we've got some engineers here. I mean, the boiler is what's allowing us to stay moving, isn't it? I, I, I really don't know what, what the inner workings of a ship are like. But I can see right here, it looks like we're going off of the energy from the boiler. It's probably helping melt the ice pack around us. Um... So Hammond's doing the important work. <gasps> Puppies! The dogs regard Ingrid with rapt attention as he sh she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins her side as you approach. Try some. Uh, I mean, I've already eaten dinner. Fair. She takes a sip herself without hesitation. Penguin, some blubber, fats and proteins. Fastest way to hydrate them. Was there something you needed? Um, just inspecting the animals. They belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need the ice. It cools them through their paws as they run. It overheat otherwise. Who's that beside you? Who's this puppy? This is Stanberry. I oh, Stanberry. Strong animal. Very. They handle stress differently, adapt quickly, there's plenty to be learned from them. You love these animals. They need me. And you'll need them. Oh, <gasps> pet Stanberry. The game has done the important work. We can pet the dog. Here we go. It barks at you. Oh, and moves behind its master. <laughs> well, shucks. <sighs> okay, so it looks like this right here is glowing. That means we can move on to the next week, day. Food rations, normal. Yep. Oh, God. Negative 58. Oh, geez. Oh, God. What? Uh. Oh, I see. Oh, not negative 58. We're just going down. Okay. Ooh. This is, this is gnarly. Okay, so we're going to go on half rations, I guess. Oh, this is bad. 
Okay, well, let's confirm it. We can always raise it up. Another week passes. The temperance has finally entered the thick ice leads and the days grow ever brighter. So we're in, in summertime here. We haven't gone into winter, which is good. Three weeks on the temperance. Whew. Okay, let's see anyone here. Let's check down there. We are getting low on fuel and this is making me nervous. I don't know how we're supposed to get more. Okay, we've got nothing in the pantry. We've got pumps. Nothing to do with them yet. <gasps> Game saved tree. Oh my goodness, we are... We are uh, really breaking through the ice at this point. So we're looking, we're looking. We have made it halfway. I thought maybe, oh, I thought we were only going to be a week out, but it looks like we're at least two weeks out. And that's not good. Yikes. Uh. Okay, here we go. Captain, oh, where? He appears to be absent. This chair is unoccupied. Oh, God. Um... I mean, we should, I, let's get started. He can, <gasps> the whole room shudders. Oh no. Oh no, are we stuck? What in the, well, I was worried about this. Look at that ice. We could be trapped for a while. Strong pressures, <laughs> as if we didn't have enough bother. Well, no need mucking around. Let's get to work. Where's Hunt? I'll grab him. I'm sure he felt it too. Shaw, check the boiler room. I'm sure the mole man has problems of his own. Not to worry, everyone. We'll be free and moving again before you know it. Back to work. Okay, Kurt, I appreciate you taking the lead, but also... That's kind of my role, isn't it? I don't know. Just a thought. Officer Shaw, what happened? Ships come to a stop. I almost flung my camera into a wall. We didn't hit anything, did we? Um, have you seen Hunt? We're trapped in some ice. Um, I want to ask if... No, I'll first just explain what's happening. We're trapped in some ice. We'll need to break loose to get moving again. Well, let's hope we can do that sooner rather than later. Trapped in the ice, though? That would make for a good photograph. Okay. Well... Thank you for documenting everything. Um, okay, so let's go down. Grimly, ship's stuck then. If you're looking for Hunt, you just missed him. How? We didn't cross paths. Don't ask me. I'm gonna check with my brother. Well, that's very strange. Okay, we've got a coal bunker. Oh, whoops. I lifted up a stack of coal, all right. Drop it in. Drop it in while I'm at the boiler. Aye. If I made any errors, I'd tell you. It's secured. Don't you worry. They notice you. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of the situation. Uh, what's what's happening? I'm ensuring that the boiler was not damaged in the sudden commotion. And I told you, if it was, you'd already know. I'm not in the business of making mistakes. I know that if the furnace goes, we go down with it. Yes, but you're only one man with a pair of engineers as assistants. Just looking at the number of valves, this seems far too much for you to handle. Maybe your bloody benefactor should have considered that. I've gotten used to it by now. It will hold, trust me. I will. Well, I will have to, won't I? I don't fancy staying on this ship any longer than necessary. It's imperative we break free from the ice as quick as possible. Hammond eyes you, a grimace on his face. What's tough is that I imagine, and I am no scientist or explorer, but not only does the cold probably impact the boat, the ship itself, but the pressure on the ice, if it continues to close in on us, it will break the ship, I imagine. So... We've got a couple of big problems if we don't get out <laughs> of this of the situation. If 
first mates here, but where's the one who got us into this bloody mess? Uh, I was hoping that Templeton knew. I was informed by one of the Stokes that I had just missed him. That's what he told me too. But I have a suspicion as to where he may be now. We're on a ship, an unmoving one at that. A man cannot simply disappear. He's anywhere he must be in his cabin. I was just there though. When you find the man, give him an earful on my behalf. Can't do it myself. Too busy keeping us alive. Templeton gives a nod. I believe you and I both owe our good captain a visit, Shaw. But you should call the crew for dinner first. Routine is important, especially now. Not before we've fed this furnace. Mind grabbing some coal from the bunker, Shaw? Are you afraid of dirty hands like Mr. Templeton over here? Ugh. Well, I, I have, I, I grabbed coal. Coal goes in, we stay alive. Really is that simple. Okay, ask engineers to raise the heat, cures the crew of freezing. Uh, let's do... Can I put them both on? Um, and let's feed the furnace. I should have grabbed more. Okay. I mean, can I, can I go and get some more? No, it's only letting me grab one. Okay. All right. You emerge mid-deck to find the crew readying themselves for dinner, despite the ice. Some seem nervous, others as if nothing changed at all. Uh, but where is the captain? Let me just do a quick... Yeah, there's nothing changed up here. Where could the captain be? Like Templeton said, it's a ship. The crew have their meal. The dinner is shared. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> the crew return to their posts. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. Okay, so once again, we're in another evening. You didn't see him either? Didn't pass by, but his cabin door was locked when I checked. Slippery bastard. What are you thinking, Hunt? What is going on? So Grimly did not see the captain? He just lied? Okay, there's nothing happening in the furnace here, the boiler. Hmm. No sign of Hunt, I take it? Mr. Templeton passed by, but he wasn't exactly willing to take questions. Okay. So no one, no one else is, whoops, I meant to go up. Whoa, oh, that's wild. Just you're standing on the ocean, no big deal. Trying to figure out how to, I guess, reduce the pressure of the ice. Keep it up, lads. We'll set ourselves right in no time. Ah, Shaw, I just saw Templeton entering the captain's cabin. Seems Hunt holed himself up inside. Maybe if he had a word with our good captain, he'd be willing to lend a hand. Yeah, what's going on, Captain? Oh, is he just, is he drunk? Oh my god. Oh my god, no. Hmm. I was informed that he was here. Where could he have hidden himself? <sighs> At this point, leave the man. I will handle matters. Despite Hunt's issues, there still is a chain of command. We cannot wave it so flippantly. Oh god. Arr. The captain's laugh rings out from behind the door. The captain watches you both, his head swaying as he chuckles to himself. You are a surprisingly difficult man to get a hold of, Hunt, seeing that this is your ship. I know it well. Hunt's eyes turn to you. I believe you two are already acquainted. How long have you been drinking? I don't suppose you care to join. Hunt shakes his hip flask as he holds it out, whiskey sloshing and spilling from the top. And what of you, Shaw? I can't tempt you with some sweet nectar. I am fine. You'll be more than fine with a drink in you. Oh, well, your loss. You intend to offer drinks at a time like this. This ship. Your ship is trapped in the ice. 
It's my ship now, is it? Oh, oh, we're getting some drama in here. What's going on now? <laughs> and what do you expect me to do? Get the shovels out? Um... Okay, so I'm personally interested in what do you mean this isn't your ship, but it's like, is that really going to help anything? But I guess none of these are super helpful. They all kind of goad him a little bit. I mean, we could have heeded Kurt's warning. We we already talked about this. Ah, Kurt, are you still hanging on his word? You have some luck relying on that old lout. He's a man chasing a spotlight, nothing more. There is no safe passage here. This was always going to happen. Mr. Hunt, Captain, if you are not fit to stand, then you should retire for the night. Shaw will stand in your stead and we can continue in the morning. And abandon my duty? No captain who would do that is a fit captain, wouldn't you agree? Well, not you, Shaw. Isn't that right? What do you think makes for a good leader? Oh, if I said sobriety for a start, that would be shots fired. Making the difficult choices, choices that nobody wants to make. Being able to do the job, the job I've been doing on your behalf. Good leader, huh? I'm curious what you all think would make a good leader as well, whether it's one of these options that you want to just pick out or if you have any additional elements to add to that. I think if I were picking out of, I'm not going to pick sobriety for a start. That's just the salty answer. Um, I think the, the leader needs to be able to make the difficult choices. I think that's part of the job of being a leader, which I also have been doing, but I won't be salty about it. Being a leader is making the difficult choices, choices nobody else wants to make. Do you think you could live with yourself? They all act like the choice is the difficult part. The choice is easy, Shaw, instinctual. It's not being able to sleep after. That's what they never prepare you for. But I'm serious, Shaw. To you, what makes a good leader? We don't have the time for, in a word then, what makes a leader? <sighs> Understanding, control, or willpower. That's tough, because those are all very important components of leadership. I think understanding is what I'm going to say. I think willpower is a very close second. I think to be a strong leader, you need to have a strong will. But I think first and foremost, you need to understand where everyone's coming from to be able to make those leadership decisions. Understanding. Explain. The ability to adapt to your crew. Oh, man, I feel like this is making I'm like making important choices now, and I'm hoping I'm making OK choices. So understanding the ability to adapt to your crew, to understand the individual needs that make up the whole. Or do I pick to understand what needs to be done to know your next course of action or to understand your limitations and to know what you're capable of? Those are all really important things to understand, especially just given the context of this game. I think I'm not going to pick this last one because you don't know what you're capable of, especially in a situation as extreme as being in the Arctic. Is that where we're at? Like, this is an extreme situation that I don't think people may totally understand where their limitations are or aren't. But I think if you know what needs to be done, you know the next course of action, and maybe you can encompass within that you know who is going to be the best people to take that action. I think that may be the next, the understanding that I'm looking for. And Hunt says, that's something you can know, is it? Perhaps you'd like to step above deck. Look over the bow. Nothing but ice surrounds you. You can't see five meters from your face through all of the mist. Do you know the next course of action there? Speaking in platitudes will do you no good. A good leader is something more than a single rule you were told to follow. When you see one, you just know. 
You have wasted enough time pining philosophical. Oh, my apologies. I'll ask the real questions. Shaw, look at where we are. Do you honestly think we're going to survive this? I don't know. I, I expected as much. The captain laughs. Shaw, nobody knows we're out here. That doesn't leave this room. No, no, wouldn't want to upset your employer. Wait, nobody knows we're out here? <sighs> so there's not even the possibility of a follow-up of a rescue of anyone? Oh my God. Our benefactor? We want to, we all want to be paid after this, don't we? Enough. If you weren't fit to lead this expedition, you should not have agreed to it. You, you shouldn't be, none of us should be here. Old Kurt paid handsomely to join, and you're just a botanist sent to keep an eye on me, our doctor. <laughs> then there's me. And myself? What are we actually searching for? What are we actually searching for? Hunt chuckles, gesticulating mockingly with his hands. Ghosts. Templeton opens the door. The captain needs his rest. We'll discuss this once he's of sound mind. Uh, let him speak, Templeton. I wish to know more. It's all right, Robin. What? No. Go on now, Shaw. I'll be all right here. What? Okay, so that's the end. End of week three. What is even happening? You awake? Oh no. To a room awash with green. There's a loud banging on your door and a familiar voice speaks from behind the wood. Shaw, are you in there? Hammond, what's going on? Why is everything green? What was that noise? The pressures. The boilers in serious trouble. Pumps need manned and we need to stop the whole system overheating. And I don't need to tell you if the furnace goes, we go. L lead the way. We don't have a moment to spare. I'm not going to ask about Hunt. I, like, we just need to do what we need to do. We need to find the captain now. Is the captain gone again? Oh my god. Kasha rushes up, holding her camera tight as the ship rumbles. What's happening? Are we going under? Not if I can help it. Out of the way. It's safe to go up top, right? That aurora, it's a shot I can't miss. Kasha steps back before snapping a photograph of the ensuing chaos. Okay, so that's the aurora. That's beautiful. Oh my god. The lights of the aurora flicker over the pale ice. This is beautiful, but not good. This is very bad. Where's the captain? Nothing. Visibly perturbed, he takes a moment to compose himself. Even the tub is empty. Why would you expect him to be in the tub? Not important. This doesn't make sense. The man seemed barely fit to crawl himself into bed earlier. What? Hammond turns to you. All right, Shaw. Captain's missing. You're in charge. Oh, we can't give, on hunt, give up on Hunt that easily. What? We haven't even looked over the rest of the ship. I bloody well can. He missed his chance to take the reins. Yes, indeed. The crew are no doubt waking at this moment. They're no doubt scared, confused. It is your duty to keep them calm, to maintain order. Hammond glares at Templeton. It's Shaw's job to get down to the boiler room, now. We've already wasted enough time looking for that bastard hunt. If you storm down to that room, all you'll be doing is inciting a panic. We need to calm the fears of the crew, maintain an air of focus. Lie to them as the ship goes down? Not at all. Instead, to assure them that we know how to remedy this matter. You do know how to remedy this matter, Mr. Hammond. Aye. And we need to be quick. I don't have time to worry about some stupid sailor's feelings. We've got a bloody ship to save. Well, it's as you said. Officer Shaw is in charge. The decision is yours. Oh, God. Templeton is right. We need to focus on calming the crew. Or Hammond is right. We can't waste any more time. The boiler won't wait for us. 
I mean, okay, here's the thing. Maybe folks get a little panicked, but if that costs us saving the ship or like buying us time, I think we may have to go for the boiler and I won't calm the crew. Templeton, you calm the crew. I'm going to go for the boiler. The boiler won't wait for us. Fine. I will keep the crew at bay then. Thank you, Templeton. That's all I was asking. Come on. Don't worry about him. Let's go. Okie dokie, artichokey. We've got a boiler to save. As more of the crew notice you and Hammond descending below, whispers begin. Uh-oh, we've lost some decorum. Soon, the crew pick up the pace, walking directionless with hurried footsteps. Kurt approaches. Boiler trouble, I take it? I'll lend a hand. Not when you're walking with that cane, you're not. I have enough strength to go tell the crew to hit the lower decks, as many as possible. Let's go, Shaw. Time to save this blasted ship. All right, here we go. You descend the ladder. Ahead, you can see the brothers trying to open the door to the hold. Oh no, is the pressure making it so that the frame's j jammed? Trying to get in? Same. Door's stuck. Pull harder, you bastards. We need to get in there. Can you help us? The metal door unsticks. Grimly looks to you before darting off into the dark. Where's that bloody idiot running off to? To sound the alarm! Bloody hells. Let's get moving. Oh, you enter the boiler room as you enter Hammond's engineering team are hard at work. The larger of the two engineers loses grip of their valve as steam begins to shoot out, causing Hammond to dash forward. Watch it! Hammond tackles, tackles the engineer to the ground, saving him from a nasty steam burn. Made it just in time. What's the word, Chief? Keep those valves pumping. We need to avoid a water hammer or we won't be making it off the ship. What's a water hammer? That sounds bad. Shaw. The rest of the crew aren't here. Grab a valve and start turning. Oh God, okay. Um, I'll grab this one. You grab a valve and begin turning, trying all you can to keep the water at bay. Pump! Oh god, you feel the ache in your muscles as you continue to push the valve, keeping the pressure at bay. Ah, we've lost fuel. The furnace rumbles and sputters, hemorrhaging fuel. You keep turning, doing the best you can to keep the pressure at bay. We could be at this for hours. Shit, where's the rest of the crew? What are they doing? Oh, here we go. Brought help. Thank you, Grimly. Oh, the furnace. Get me coal and turn those valves. Um, okay. Let me grab some coal. One stack of briquettes. All right, here we go. Feed the furnace. I mean, can I grab more than one piece? Oops. Oh, oh, okay, I can assign. All right, you're a kid, you're quick. Um, let's, let's just have all of you, actually, no, you're strong. Um, we'll have you all collect coal. They get to work, beautiful. All right, oh my gosh, can we save this? Can we, can we make this work? Oh, whoops, oh gosh. I wish, is there like a, ah, here we go. Okay, I can just click it. I don't have to drag. Oh, here we go. Okay, so let's do two Johns. You take that. They grab the valve. All right, and um, I don't know. Mm. We'll have Tolson. You're a sailor. You got this. You got the valve. With enough hands working on the boiler, you begin to fight back the potential water hammer. Someone's going to have to hold the furnace in place. Oh god, I should have done two Johns. I need someone strong. Um, let's do you, I guess. Oh man, oh man. Cavity approaches the furnace. <gasps> the room shakes. Water hammer. <gasps> no! A jet of steam paints Joom. It subsides as they writhe in agony. You keep up the work, shifting the valves until the boiler has fully calmed. The ship is saved. You won't be sinking today. Okay, we earned back the, the decorum we lost and then some. As the crew gives assistance to the wounded June, you feel your muscles tense. 
You fall back, collapsing from exhaustion. As you lay back, all you can hear are a pair of panicked voices. Where the hell is Captain Hunt? He's gone. He's gone? Okay, if we keep normal rations, it'll put us at 40. Fuel rations, I mean, let's... We're still at 85. I think that's okay. 65. Oh, that's not okay. Whoops. Temperance is saved from sinking. The Aurora passes, leaving only the bright light and white. <sighs> and that's the end of our fourth week. We should have made it to the island, but getting stuck has totally ruined our plans. And Hunt is missing. There is no captain. What are we going to do? Oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. So that is it for this episode. If you're enjoying this, please consider following the channel. I really appreciate it. And if you are enjoying this game, there are branches. There are other choices you can make and you can pick up the Pale Beyond now on Steam. I highly encourage it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, I've missed having narrative stories like this uh, where choices really do matter and your resource management matters. And so I, I hope you are enjoying this as well. So that's it for this episode. I will see you next time in this digital cafe where we relax and enjoy indie games. If you would like to find me on other platforms, I'm Kim Chica on TikTok and Twitch as well. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. You're finding lots of games to play and I'll see you next time. Bye.